Good morning. This is Pastor Larry, and I'm from El Shaddai Christian Assembly located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I mentioned in the past, and I'll mention again, that uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can reach me directly via email at pastor.lshaddai at gmail.com. And the channel is L space, the letter L space Shaddai, which is S-H-A-D-D-A-I dot Philly. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Today's Tuesday, February the something, the 6th probably, something like that. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm retired, so I, I don't have to keep track of, of the specific date as long as I know the day. It's Tuesday, so and it's our Tuesday teaching tidbits. And thank you for joining. Uh, in the past, I've been on a, on a journey of uh, discovery. We've been talking about things that we've been lied to. And um, today I want to kind of, it's in, in, in a way it's related, but uh, today we're going to talk about three, well, one of three subjects, which will probably be in the next couple of weeks, but uh, which is one of our tenets at our church, at our body of believers, is truth versus tradition. We always, we always take truth over tradition. And, uh, and the, I'll give you the other two. The next one is, which I'll probably do next week, is relationship over religion. And then the third one is biblical believer over cultural Christianity. So truth over tradition is the subject we're going to talk about today. Let me just read a definition of truth. And this is from, found in the Merriam Dictionary. It says, the body of, of real things, real events, real facts, actuality, the state of being the case, a fact. It's a trans, transcendent fundamental or spiritual reality. So it's, it's something that transcends time, it transcends circumstances, transcends culture. That's what truth is. Let's look at the uh, definition for tradition. Tradition, again, from the Merriam uh, Dictionary, or Webster, Mer Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It says, an inherited, established, or customary pattern of thought, action, or behavior such as a religious practice or social custom, a belief or story, or a body of beliefs or stories relating to the past that are commonly accepted as historical, though not verifiable. So that's, that's tradition. Tradition is something that, this is the second definition, which is it's something that's accepted as historical, but it's not verifiable. So um, just something to think about as we go forward. And um, also, I want to read this too. This is in, in uh, John chapter 17, verse 17. The Messiah is talking to his disciples, or pre not, he's praying about his disciples because he's going to be leaving. And uh, in verse 17 of, of John 17, the Gospel of John, he's talking to the Father and he says, Sanctify them by the truth. And then he says, Your word is truth. So Yahweh's word is the truth. It's always the truth. It's it's it just like I, I mentioned the the definition of uh, of truth is something that transcends. It it's his word is true, no matter how you feel. Like it, it could be raining, his word is still true. It could be whatever, but his word is true. So his word is true. Like like for example, if he says it's better to give than to receive. That's always true. It's not true based on your circumstances. Again, I'm not trying to get you to give, so don't even go there with that. But it's always, his word is always true. That was the first example that popped up. So it's always true. And, and anyway, giving is not just what we make it to be giving money, giving time, giving favor, giving mercy, giving love, giving friendship. So, yeah, so don't go there with money because I wasn't going there uh, trying to uh, uh, pick up money because um, I'm blessed. I'm taken care of. I have all that I need. I, have, I, my, I was able to retire. So obviously I have, I have more than enough um, or else I would still be working. But, uh, yeah, anyway, the, the word of, of Yahweh or, or the Father is always true. It's not just true... Um, when when things are going well it's true when things aren't going well as a matter of fact that's when we need it to be true we need it to be even uh, more true or our our need for the truth is stronger when things aren't going well 
than when things are going well for us. And uh, so I know it's a, it's like a paradox, but yeah, we need the word to always be true. And and Yeshua was just saying, he said, your word is 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 truth. His word is truth. As a matter of fact, it says that everything was that we can see, all of creation was established by His Word, and Yeshua said, "The words that I speak to you are spirit and life." Well, I could go off into that, but I want to read this too. Sometimes uh, I also want to mention that truth is not transitional, and it's not your own truth. I know people who follow Oprah, and she was saying, "Oh, this is my truth or your truth." If she was God, maybe that would be true, but uh, since she's not, or anybody else who declares that. I would, I would imagine that God or the God of creation, Yahweh, Elohim, that his word that created everything would be the defining matter. And so his word is true. It's not your truth. It's not Truth is not transitional. It's not based on where you can see. Because you see in part, but you don't know, in, you don't know fully. Yahweh knows completely because he sits outside of time and he can see from one end of the spectrum to the other. He can see the whole truth. And so his words that goes out, it says he, he's not a man that he should lie. And uh, so his words are always true. And it's, and, it's, it's, and it's for our good. Anyway, let me read this in Genesis 15. I've read this before probably in one, one of our other, um, other uh, teachings. But uh, this, is, this is Yahweh making a covenant with Abraham. Uh, there was a covenant. This covenant is the same as a promise. And again, I just said that Yahweh's word is always true. So here's the covenant he's making with him. And uh, he says, um, he says, then verse 13 of chapter uh, 15 in Genesis. Genesis 15, verse 13. So Abraham has, has awakened and the Lord says to him, he said to Abraham, no, or Abram, not even Abraham yet. He says, no for certain. I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible. Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not their own. So they will be strangers in a land that's not their own. And they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. So he says, know that you're, you're for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not their own. And they will be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. I want to go to one more scripture and then we're going to jump into this a little bit more deeply. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. In the Brian Study Bible, it says, uh, Now the duration of the Israelites' stay in Egypt was 430 years. But there's a note there. And the note shows, it says that in the, in the Greek Septuagint and the Samaritan Pentateuch, that it says they were in Egypt and Canaan. But anyway, it says in Exodus chapter 12, verse 40, it says, Now the duration of the Israelites' stay in Egypt was 430 years. Now, um, people... Uh, a lot of in Christianity equate that 430 years to the promise that we just read here in Genesis 15 verse 13. Let's go back. And um, so I, I believe that we were just talking about how Yahweh's word is true. And it says that he says, verse 13, he says, Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain, this is something that is going to specifically happen that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. Sometimes more than one thing can be true at the same time. Um, but let me get back. We're, we'll expand on that in a minute. But um, it says they will be strangers in a land that is not their own. So they won't know this land. It'll be a strange land to them, and it won't be their own. And... Um, you know, the children of Israel went into Egypt on purpose because they knew where Egypt was. So it wasn't a strange land to them. So right there, that sort of discounts this. And and it says the land that's not their own is where they'll be enslaved and mistreated. Well, when they came into, and you'll read this in Genesis, where when they when um, Joseph's family was made known and they came into Egypt, that the Pharaoh gave them Goshen. So that was their land. So they weren't enslaved in a land that was not their own. And then we just read in, in Exodus twelve forty that uh, that the other older versions, the Greek Septuagint and the Samaritan Pentateuch, both say four hundred and thirty years in Canaan and Egypt. So sometimes more than one thing can be true at the same time. Like for example, his de Abraham's descendants were uh, enslaved in Egypt. But think about this. This is Yahweh making a, a promise or a covenant. 
So the covenant would be associated with the people of the covenant or the promise. And let's get to it. Let's get there a little bit um, more. In, in Genesis chapter um, 25, verses 1 and 2, um, I'll actually I'll turn to that. But you know um, where it says that uh, Abram's descendants were going to go into and to be enslaved and mistreated. Okay. Or, you know, so all, all of Abram's descendants didn't go into uh, Egypt. And you're asking, you're like, what? Come on, Pastor Larry, what are you talking about now? First of all, Abram had a son named Isaac. Isaac had two sons. He had a son named Jacob and a son named Esau. They would be, both of them would be Abram's, de, Abram's descendants. Is there any record in the Bible of Esau going into slavery in Egypt? Genesis 25, verse 1 and 2. This is after Sarah had died. Now Abram had taken another wife named Keturah, and she bore him Zimram, Zimran, Jokchan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. They're Abram's descendants. They didn't go into Egypt. Sometimes we need to delve a little deeper into the word and see what, what exactly is going on. And uh, I have to say this too. I, I mentioned earlier at the, at the onset that Yahweh's word is always true. And so if he says it's going to be 430 years and he sits outside of time, I would think he would be able to count and to know what he, if he meant 430 years or 400. And uh, so he said 400 years, not 430 years. If his word is true and he knows what's going to happen, you would imagine that he would understand that when he says 400 years to Abram of his children, his descendants being enslaved and mistreated. And so how do we find that? And how? And I just read and showed you that there are some people that were Abram's descendants that didn't go into Egypt. That's because this is associated with the promise or the covenant. He's, Yahweh at this time is talking a covenant or a promise to Abraham. And that promise is, is so his descendants that are associated with the promise. And then until we look at the uh, children of Israel and we say, oh, there, there are 12 tribes of Israel. That's correct. But there was one tribe that was singled out for the promise even amongst them. And that's where the lion of the tribe of Judah was going to come. So the promise always, or that covenant, and these, these things that he, the uh, prophecy is, is specifically related to the promise or the covenant. And so there were tribes that, uh, in, that were dispersed in Assyria and they were scattered around. And then we read in Matthew uh, 24 and Luke 21, and this is after the, the 10 tribes had already been in the northern kingdom, had already been dispersed. And now you have the, uh, the southern kingdom, which was named Judah. It also had some other people gathered in. Uh, there were Levites there, and, and the tribe of Benjamin was associated with, but they were uh, with, with the tribe of Judah. And it may have been other people moved in. It's not like um, there was this barrier that you couldn't cross from the northern kingdom to the southern kingdom. You may have married somebody over there. But the promise is associated with Judah. And at the time of the Messiah, when he's talking in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 about the signs of the end times, and he says, he says, you'll be led captive into all nations. At that time, the only people around were, were the people that had been in the southern kingdom. Judah, which was the southern kingdom, that's how it was renamed. The northern kingdom was Israel and sometimes known as Ephraim or Samaria. But Judah and the promise and the Messiah came through Judah. That's why they were still there at that time when he was born. And so now he's talking to them. And he's talking to where the covenant or that promise is associated with. He says, you will be scattered. He didn't say all of Israel. He says, he says you will be scattered into all the nations of the earth, led captive in all nations of the earth. So that's, that's, that's actually significant. Because when we read that in 15, Genesis 15, 13, and it says your descendants, but every all of his descendants, all of Abram's descendants, did not go into captivity for 400 years. There was one tribe or one group of people where Judah happened to be scattered, and uh, they were the ones that were the 400 years. We'll get into that maybe in a, another session. But I just wanted to put that out there, that um, that sometimes we'll read something and we'll make it tradition. It'll become a tradition, because, but it's not historically verifiable. And so the word, but the word is always true. In Mark chapter 7, I'm trying to hurry. I don't want to um, make this run too long. But Mark chapter 7, 
verse 9. Actually, I'm going to read uh, verse 8. Sorry. Mark chapter 7, verse 8. I'm, just, I'm going to go up one more. It says, this is Yeshua talking to Messiah. He says, verse 7, he says, he says they worship me in vain. They teach as doctrine the precepts of men. Then verse 8, he says, You have disregarded the com commandment of God to keep the tradition of men. And then he went on verse 9, he says, He went on to say, You neatly set aside the command of God, which is the word of God, which is always true, to maintain your own tradition. And it says that through our traditions, we actually um, disregard or we make the, the word of God of none effect by... We, we nullify the Word of God by, by uh, focusing more on the tradition than on the truth. Like, for example, just how I just explained, uh, uh, shared some things in Genesis 15. Because of tradition, everybody told us that uh, Israel was in Egypt for, for 400 years or 430 years. Even though Yahweh said it would be 400 years, they would be enslaved and mistreated. And there's a whole much, bunch more documentation even in the Bible that will show you how long the children of Israel were in Egypt. It was nowhere near 430 years. It was no, And it was no, nowhere near 400 years. There's one group of people that has been led, just like Yahweh said, or Yeshua said, he said, you will be led captive into all nations. Not, not just scattered. He said, you will be led captive. So the truth is you'll be led captive into all nations, not scattered into all nations. So what you the, then the sign would be so you could determine who Yahweh's talking about or Yeshua is talking about is who has been led captive into all nations. And if you find that out, then you'll you'll find the children of the promise of the, of the covenant. But tradition will make us look away from the word. It'll nullify the power of the word. You know, um, traditions change based on societal norms. Uh, for example, but the truth doesn't change. Like I said, the truth is transcendent. That's just from man's definition. But um, like, for example, here's the tradition. In our societies, we used to take care of our family and our own. We used to all live around each other. You know, growing up, you'd live near your cousins and aunts and uncles and, and everybody would band together. But as we got more... Um, prosperous as a society we spread out and we start each to go seek our own fortune and things like that and we spread out and as a result we don't do we don't even do the traditions that we used to do we used to uh, like i said we used to take care of our own but our our traditions change now we didn't have look at all the 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 uh, the, the abundance of daycares now we used to take care of our own children or your or your or your sister's children like say for example if my sister was home she would be watching over all the kids and uh, because we all live near each other so that was our norm our our tradition the, the but it's changed because now we're so prosperous as a people that we spread out and we do our own thing and now even when our our parents get old uh, or or grandparents get old now they have to go into assisted living or places like that. That wasn't the case before. I'm not trying to tell you, I'm not trying to put a guilt trip. I'm just saying how the traditions have changed because of society. And, but the truth is that Yahweh is into relationship. He always takes care of his own. I don't want to, that relationship will be next week over religion. But I just wanted to put that out there to show you that how things change. Our traditions can change based on our circumstances. Our circumstances spread us apart. And so as a result, we don't do the follow the traditions that we used to. But the truth, here's the truth about that, what I just mentioned about daycare, assisted living. The truth is that there's not many people in this world that will take care of your family better than you will. No, there's not many people that would love your children as much as you do. Not many people that love your grandparents as much as you do. Not many people that would love your parents as much as you do. And uh, again, I'm not trying to put a trip on you. I'm just putting the truth on you to, so you can be aware of it. So that knowing that, with that armed with that knowledge, whatever, wherever you are, whatever you have to do, that you'll do it the best way possible. Knowing that if they're not going to take care of your family, then you're going to follow up and check up on them. You, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm just, this is the truth. Don't let this new tradition 
change the, the truth. Like you care about your family more than anybody else does. So follow up on them if they're in a situation like that. But anyway, here's another truth. Two plus two is always going to equal a certain number, no matter what kind of new math or whatever, you know. So there's certain truths. And, and so why are you saying that? Because Yahweh's word is always true. This is a natural thing I was showing you. Two plus two is always four. But the spiritual, which is over above this, is Yahweh's word is always true. And it's always working. And it's always out there. And it's like, um, here's an example. Uh, like, for example, you turn on your television, you turn it on, and then you turn to a, a certain channel to watch the program or, or whatever. When you turn it on, it's not when that, that program starts up. You know, in other words, the radio waves or the television waves, Wi-Fi and, and all satellite signal, it's it's out there. It's not waiting for, oh, when, 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 when Brother Larry or Pastor Larry turns the television on, now we push the button to make sure this program or our station starts up. It's always out there. Yahweh's always out there. It's just that we have to tune in to his truth, not our own truth. We turn to him. And we turn to his truth because he's always on. He's always out there. He's always loving you. He's always caring about you. Let me just throw this last thing out there just just to, to mess with you. Uh, like, for example, tradition. This is tradition tells us that Good Friday, which will be coming up, I guess, soon, is when Yeshua died. And then he rose on Sunday. And then, but Matthew 12, verse 38 through 40 Yeshua is talking about his, his own death. He says, just like um, uh, Jonah was in the belly of the whale, he says, I will be three days and three nights. So let's see, Good Friday to Sunday, which is when we say he rose. Let's go three days and three nights. Friday to Saturday, it's one. Saturday, Sunday, it's two. Tradition makes the word of Yahweh of none effect. It makes us do stupid things, do stupid math. A minute ago, I said two plus two always equals four. But not in this case, if we're going to go by tradition and say, okay, he's three days and three nights, like he said. But then people tell us Good Friday was when he died and, and Sunday was when he rose. There's a whole bunch more, and maybe I'll share that towards the end of the month. But I, I like to say TTMIF, which is try to make it make sense. You know, IS, try to make it make sense because it doesn't, or try to make it fit. You can't make this fit. So why am I saying that? Because tradition will have us all the way out here looking the wrong way when the truth is over here. Just like I read that in Genesis 15, 13 about the, the covenant that Yahweh was making with his children. And because people gave us tradition and said, oh, they were in Israel for, or Egypt 430 years and we just believed it. And we just took it hook, line, and sinker while right under our nose there was a 400 years slavery and, 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 and servitude and mistreatment going on that we weren't, even though we were aware of it, we weren't because tradition obliterated it. Truth versus tradition. I think it's a valuable commodity. It's truth. Tradition's not. You know, and um, when we stand before Yahweh, Certain things are going to be burned up. Certain works will be, it'll be burnt up like trash. But the truth will last forever. So with that, shalom. Talk to you soon. And uh, listen, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Drop a comment or something. Email me at pastor.l space. I mean, not l space. I'm thinking of the channel. At pastor.lshaddai at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Love you. Pray God's best over you and your family, that this will be the absolute best day of your life, the beginning of the best of the rest of your life. Shalom.